Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Hugging Cast V4. This is the fourth episode uh, of our new live show about open source AI. And this also will be the last episode of our first season. And next month, we'll take a break, a little hiatus. So if you have any feedback or ideas about the show, things that you want to see more of, things that you want to see less of, then please stick around and let us know at the end of the episode uh, uh, your thoughts. And then if you're watching Hugging Cast for the first time, we want it to be a cross between a podcast and a webinar. And we want to talk to you about the latest and greatest developments in the beautiful world of open source AI. And we also want you to walk away having learned something practical that you can apply in your work. So in each episode, we'll show you how to do something and have a hands-on demo. And today is a special episode because we want to dedicate it, dedicate the whole show about Llama 2, the new amazing open access large language model published by Meta. I'm Jeff Boudier. I'm on the product team here at Hugging Face, and I'm joined today with my co-conspirator and fellow caster, the hero of the demo, Philip Schmidt. Hi, everyone. And before we... Hey, Philip. And before uh, we talk about uh, Lama 2 in all detail, I want to share three pieces of news that are non-Lama related. And uh, we've had uh, uh, quite a few folks from uh, uh, Europe uh, show up and say uh, hi from Germany. I got Belgium. I got Paris. I got, I got, I got the whole of it. And for you guys in Europe, uh, one interesting uh, product piece of news is that we just shipped a new GDPR feature uh, for our enterprise users so that you can select specifically uh, for a model or a data set repository to be hosted in Europe so you can build GDPR compliant applications uh, using, uh, using the Hugging Face Hub. So that's number one. And number two, uh, number two uh, today also, this week also is a very important uh, release week in the world of diffusion, in the world of image generation, with the release of Stable Diffusion XL 1.0. And today, the Diffusers library, which, by the way, just turned one year old, uh, released the 0.19 version, uh, which ships uh, uh, SDXL 1.0. Uh, so go check it out. And we have a, a space a radio a demo that's available on the hub. I have a little banner here with, a, with the URL. And speaking of uh, Gradio, uh, and that's the third piece of news that is non-LAMA related, uh, we just published on Deep Learning AI a new course on how to build generative AI applications on, uh, uh, on Gradio. So it's super cool. It's our own Apollinario Passos, who's uh, uh, being the, the main instructor there. Uh, so a new great free resource for you guys. Uh, to learn how to build great Gen AI applications. All right. Well, that's all for the non-Lama news. Now we're we're uh, happy to resume to the main topic of conversation, which is Lama two. And so uh, to get started, and I know that uh, Philip, you've spent a lot of time uh, digging into all the particulars of uh, of uh, Lama two release. Um, I wanted to ask you, like, for somebody. Uh, who hasn't followed all the millions posts uh, that uh, we uh, published uh, about uh, Lama 2. Like, if I'm coming from the world of Lama 1, which was, by the way, I think one of the biggest events uh, in AI uh, over the, the past, uh, um, this year, uh, which uh, sort of started this whole Cambrian explosion of new models, uh, fine-tuned models, uh, models reinforced from human feedback, uh, that uh, made all these large language available on the hub. So Lama V1 started all this. So what does this mean and what is new with uh, Lama V2? Yeah, so so Lama V2 is basically the, the next version of the Lama model we have seen in early February. And Lama V2 oh is like... Uh, Am I can you hear me? <laughs> Is it my internet breaking or is yours, Jeff? Guys, can you hear me or can you hear Jeff?
Okay, perfect. And I just continue and like we wait until Jeff is back. So yeah, Llama 2, uh, like super exciting is like the, the next version. Um, and I think like the, the, the main differences we have seen or Meta doing is and they're not only releasing uh, pre-trained weights. So Llama 1 was only the base model we have seen. And with Llama 2, we have seen the um, reinforcement or chat models as well. Uh, there's Jeff, let me add it again. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no problem. Um, and then like really different to Llama V2 is that uh, meta trained Llama uh, sorry, different to Llama 1 is Llama 2 is like trained on like almost as twice as much uh, data. So they trained all of the models 7B, 13B and 70B on like 2 trillion tokens. Um, they increased the context window by 2x to 4096 tokens, uh, which of course now can be extended um, since they are still using the rotary embeddings. Um, a difference is that the 70B model, so the biggest model, uses a different type of attention called group query attention, which is basically more efficient than multi-head attention, um, but a bit better than um, multi-query attention. So they added it to have like a better uh, latency for those uh, big models in terms of memory usage. And then, like as mentioned in, in the beginning, um, the team at Meta really and heavily focused on reinforcement learning from human feedback and creating uh, conversational modern uh, models which are safe um, or at least aligned with, with human preferences. And for this, they collected a lot of additional data. Um, they created a, a data set called uh, Meta Safety and Helpful, which uh, collects 1.5 million uh, human preferences, which is uh, the biggest data set we know of um, in, in terms of like research. Of course, we don't know what Anthropic or uh, OpenAI has, um, and those um, preference data uh, were used to um, create a reward model, which then was used um, together with rejection sampling and PPO to create those chat models, which are um, heavily focused on safety. And Meta invested quite a lot of resources into also analyzing the data set in terms of biases and distribution of ethnics. Um, so it's like super cool if you're interested in those kind of topics, you should definitely check out the paper. I think like at least 40% of the paper is about uh, those topics. That's really cool. Thank you. And sorry for the glitch. I had to disappear with <laughs> wasn't my intention. Um, but we talk about uh, uh, Lama 2 as one model, but uh, really Meta published uh, 12 uh, checkpoints uh, when they released the model on the hub. Um, and so for people who haven't experimented with all these different checkpoints, um, what, uh, which one should they use in which context? And what is the uh, dash chat or dash H HF model name like, really mean? Yeah, so uh, the, the Meta created a new organization on Hagenface called Meta-Lama. And in there, as you mentioned, are 12 different checkpoints. Six of them are uh, for the original Lama um, code, which are not ending with a dash HF. And then we have six of them ending with a dash, dash HF, which you can use with the Hagenface ecosystem. So you can load them in transformers. You can deploy them with text generation inference. Yeah, you can like fine tune them using PEP. And for those six models, we have like two different flavors. So we have the base models uh, and then we have the chat models. The base models are basically pre-trained checkpoints uh, for like the sizes 7, 13 and 70 B. And the chat models are uh, the reinforcement learned models we, we talked about earlier. And those models can be used for instruction uh, use cases or for, for conversational use cases. So they basically create one fine-tuned models for single and multi-term um, conversations. That's awesome. And I see lots of great questions coming on in the chat. Uh, I'll, I'll finish with my introductory questions and then we can go through the, uh, the, uh, um, the audience yes. questions. Um, and so the next question is, okay, so there are 7, 13 and 70 billion uh, uh, checkpoints. Um, of course, like many people want to try the 70 billion checkpoints. Um, so first, like, how are these checkpoints doing in the uh, open uh, LLM leaderboard? Um, and then for people who want to try for themselves the model, like what good options does uh, Hugging Face offer? Yes, yeah, so uh, yesterday we have seen the first fine-tuned models of Llama 70B uh, exceeding uh, GPT 3.5 on the MMLU leader, um, 
benchmark. So the open leaderboard has uh, four typical benchmark we run. One of them is MMLU. We have Drewful, QA, Hella, Swag, and Arc. And um, the base models of Llama are like, of course, not at the top since they're like not fine tuned, but the more fine tuned models we see, um, the, the more like we see them appearing on the top. But also, uh, we need to be a bit careful with the leaderboard since uh, we don't really know always if there's some kind of continuous, like if the data set is contaminated, meaning potentially there could be a chance that someone includes the benchmark data into his model to get a better score. So you always should treat the, the results uh, with some grain of salt and make your own tests to make sure uh, which model works the best. But of course, we know from like the base models, which are not fine tuned, that they like are equally comparable to others. Um, but yeah, like uh, Mat uh, Meta Llama 70B, um, the base version is currently rank six, I think. And then um, four of the models above um, Llama V2, or basically the four, uh, first three mo models are fine tuned versions of Llama V2. And then what is super, super impressive, I think, is that we already see uh, 13B uh, fine-tuned versions, which are better than Llama V1 30P. So we have like uh, 13B models, which are almost three times smaller than Llama V1 40P and are performing better on like different benchmarks from L and LM Sys or like on the deep leaderboard. Yeah, let me quickly share also the, the leaderboard in the chat here so you can see it. Okay. Uh, did we lose Jeff again? Or is, are you, is he just staring? <laughs> okay, I guess we, we lost Jeff again. Um, uh, what we can continue um, is like is to, to try out Llama. And there are several ways for you to like try out Llama. Uh, we have hosted Llama 70B chat on the Hugging chat. So if you want to try out the 70B version, um, the chat version of it, you can like do this by going to Hugging chat and then um, chatting with it. Let me quickly share my screen so we can like do it together. So I'm in the Hugging chat um, and then like I, I can start asking uh, the model and Okay, well, it is not allowed to tell me the identity of it is since it is an AI, text-based AI language model. Let me make it a bit quicker, uh, but we can ask who trained you. Okay, I was trained by researchers at Meta AI. My training data included the right range of texts, blah, 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 blah. And I'm not sure if you have uh, seen it uh, online, there are like some some tweets and like funny posts going around where Llama is um, too um, careful about what they can answer or not. And what people tried is, uh, can you explain me how to kill a JavaScript process? And normally it should say, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. Wow, OK. It learned. It is giving me instructions on how to kill a JavaScript process um, when a different user asked it. On the official demo, it was saying, yeah, hey, I cannot kill a JavaScript process since killing a living being is uh, not very um, good. But I guess we got our answer on how to uh, kill a JavaScript process. So that's that's super cool. Thanks, Philip. Okay, and, uh, yeah, thank you. I, I guess I'm going to disappear every five minutes. Uh, there must be like something special with the Wi-Fi today. Um, so yeah. Um, and like hot tip, so in order to select the 70B bundle, there's like this uh, drop down uh, when you open Hugging Chat. Uh, make sure to remember that. Um, next up, I, I wanted to ask you about, um, about inference and you just showed like how fast uh, it feels when you try the, the Hugging Chat application. But for somebody who wants to deploy um, uh, one of these models themselves, the 7B, the 13, the, uh, the larger one, like what kind of instances uh, uh, should they think about uh, to deploy those models? Yeah, so we, we uh, on Hanging Face, we uh, wrote a blog post together with uh, a lot of folks from the team uh, about uh, what 
basically everything you need to know about Hugging Face. And if you go to huggingface.com slash blog, scroll down a bit, we have Flama Tourist here, get it on Hugging Face. And in there, there's a section around inference. So we include examples on how you can like use transformers uh, to run it on like your local machine, on a virtual machine, or like basically in the environment you want. And then we also have a section about how to use it with text generation inference, which is our um, productionized solution for running uh, LLMs and inference endpoints, which is our managed SaaS solution for deploying those models. And in there, we have some recommendations uh, for inference. Um, of course, they can like differ. If you, um, for example, quantize the model, the 7D model, you might be able to fit it on like even a smaller GPU and, and then like similar for the 13B model or like the 70B model. But our recommendation is for the 7D model to go with an NVIDIA A10, which has 24 gigabytes of GPU memory. So if you are, for example, having on your local machine an RTX 3080 or something, which also has 24 gigabytes of memory, you should be able to run the model with a pretty decent performance. And then for the 13B model, we suggest uh, a single A100. Uh, and then like for the 70B model, you need at least two A100s uh, with quantization enabled. And if not, so the, the Hugging Chat version you currently have seen is running on an inference endpoint with four A100s without any quantization to basically get the maximum in terms of latency but that's not like all you can like uh, run llama 2 there's also a project called llama cpp uh, which um, is basically oriented to optimize and deploy or run llama models on uh, edge devices or your local device and there you can also run llama for example 7b using a cpu that's super super cool uh, and that actually answers a, a lot of the questions that i've seen on the on the chat uh, people were asking about like how to run uh, Llama. Is it possible on a local machine? Uh, people were asking like, what kind of machine do I need to uh, uh, run uh, the seven B or the seventy billion model? Actually, uh, uh, fun fact: the the two X and four X instances uh, are brand new, and we just shipped them to allow more efficient uh, uh, deployments of uh, Llama V two. So that's really cool. Uh, so that's inference, and then I want to turn to training. So you mentioned PEFT uh, before. Um, and when uh, Lama 2 uh, was released, uh, there were many uh, uh, libraries within the Hugging Face ecosystem that uh, supported it out of the box. Of course, Transformers, uh, but also the PEFT library and also the text generation inference library, which you just uh, mentioned. Um, so let's talk about fine tuning. Let's talk about PEFT. Like, what does it take to fine tune uh, uh, those Lama 2 models? Yeah, so PEFT stands for Parameter Efficient Fine Tuning, which is basically a collection of different methods to most efficiently fine tune your model. So when you regular fine tune your model or you you basically train all or update all gradients inside a model, which requires a lot of compute for like a 70B model that this could mean up to like 80 or even like more than 80 gigabytes of memory to fine tune your model, which is a lot. And with PEFT, um, or rather saying, for example, LoRa, you only fine tune or train a subset um, of your model's parameter, meaning it is way more efficient since you don't need to have like the gradients and the optimizer states for all of those parameters inside uh, memory and on your GPU. And uh, in addition to LoRa, there's also a method called QLoRa, which uh, we, we uh, highlight here in, in the section of the blog post, where um, you can like imagine it. So we have our like LLM. And we freeze most of the parameters and only make a few parameters fine-tunable. That's basically what the, the LoRa is doing. And the Q in QLoRa stands for quantization. And this means that the frozen LLM is uh, downcasted to a lower precision, saving even more uh, memory um, to like be able to fine-tune our model on a smaller GPU. So with the QLoRa approach, we can fine-tune Llama 7B on a GPU with like 16 gigabytes of memory, uh, we can find you in the 70B model on uh, a single A100, which is like super impressive since like it's almost equivalent to what we need for inference. And that hasn't been the case in the past. Normally you need a lot of more compute for training, but only for like a temporary amount of time. And then for inference, depending on your use or load, you have like uh, less or require less GPU. GPU and like compute, but for like a, a longer duration since you want to re-inference normally all the time. And with QLoRa and PEFT, it, like training becomes super efficient. And um, I created like a, a blog post myself on how to fine tune Llama. And in there, 
I ran some different tests on configurations on AWS, and I was able to fine tune the, 70, uh, the 13B model on a G5 instance, which has 24 gigabytes of memory. And for the Llama 70B, since AWS is not offering uh, a single A100, I used um, eight A100, and it like ran super smoothly and super fast. And fine tuning the 13B model on AWS uh, took eight hours and only costed $2, uh, sorry, $2 wow. per hour. And at the end it was $18. And like the 7B model uh, costs around uh, $2 to train on AWS. Yeah, um, let me- Wow, that's amazing. Well. And by the way, speaking of blog post, uh, uh, Gabriel was asking about uh, your blog post. I saw that you published not one, but three uh, blog posts already uh, about uh, Lama 2. And one of them was about instruction tuning. And we were just talking about fine tuning using PEFT. Um, so when you're talking about instruction tuning, like are you trying to do something different? Like how is it different? How do you how do you go about it? No, so like uh, instruction tuning is basically fine tuning for instruction, and an instruction is basically a piece of text. Um, wait, my camera is like a bit. Uh, am I in focus now again? I can see you good. Okay, then it's maybe only on my side. Um, An instruction tuning basically means that we are like providing instructions uh, to the model and also an output what the model wants to generate. And the idea behind instruction tuning is that we basically try to align the a model to follow our instructions, but not only the ones we fine tune. Uh, the idea is to leverage all of the knowledge which was included or learned by the model during the pre-training to basically uh, solve any task. So uh, for example, um, you have used ChatGPT, uh, which is also instruction tuned. And you can ask ChatGPT all kinds of tasks, like write me an email, write an email to my boss that I want to take a week off. And it's not clear if like that example exactly is inside the data set or not. The idea behind instruction tuning is that you will basically have like a different set of capabilities, like brainstorming, classification, generations, and it can basically generalize after the instruction tuning to the, the capability so that you not need to exactly fine tune it on like create a bullet point list of uh, cool ideas. The idea is to like that it gener can generalize to like what the user wants. And like the second blog post um, or which goes a bit more into detail, you can see here is really, okay, what does it mean? How can I create an instruction um, data set um, based on like a use case? Oftentimes like company wants to get started with generative AI, but don't really know where to start. And of course, like there are dozens of example out there on like how to run a script, but it's really always important to start, okay, what is the end goal I want to solve? And now with Llama 2, we have like uh, fantastic base models we can really use to fine tune for our use cases and can like then de deploy it into production. And the idea here was really to, to pick a, a real world example, create a data set and then fine tune it um, using all of the, the available tools. Awesome. And I see some people in the chat having trouble uh, uh, using some of the models with our open source. And so always remember to use the checkpoints uh, where the model name ends with dash HF. Those are the checkpoints uh, uh, which are natively compatible with our open source libraries. And Christopher was asking, like, where can I see all the recorded shows? You can find them on our YouTube channel. Um, so. I guess we've talked about uh, uh, inference and fine tuning and instruction tuning, and you, you started talking a little bit about uh, uh, the prompts in the context of instruction tuning. And uh, I see that today is like that special day where everything goes wrong and your camera is going wrong. Um, uh, so while Philip is uh, reconnecting his camera, there we go. You're looking good right here, <laughs> nice and focused. Um, so we're talking about prompting and like prompting is something that seems to be very delicate. And for instance, uh, when we uh, implemented uh, in Hugging Chat, uh, the ability uh, to uh, uh, run uh, Lama 270 billion in the Hugging Chat application, we had to uh, sort of iterate around the prompting. Um, so what can you tell us uh, about uh, what are the uh, the, the subtle things about uh, prompting large language models that you should take into account when you switch from one to another. Yeah, so what is a bit a pain, I would say, currently in the open source ecosystem that we are like getting more and more like capable language models, which are fine-tuned, but all of them have a different 
prompt basically. So for example, I, some of you might have like seen the confusion going from Meta where we have like this, this new prompt with like, um, is like the sys inside and then like the inst with like a backslash and then like some some brackets and then from like the open assistant team we have like special tokens with like an assistant and a prompter then we have like from vicuna there's like a different schema uh, alpaca is a different schema so when you like switch between models especially on fine-tuned models you should always make sure to like check the model card, check what prompt was used to train the model. Since for example, if you like go from like Lama 1 Vicuna now to Lama 2 chat from Meta um, and use the same prompt, it might look that it works since the model is pretty good, but the best performance you will always get using the prompt the, the team has, has used to fine tune it. And then of course, if you want to fine tune uh, from a base model, you can either follow one of the, the available prompt formats, like for, for instruction, Alpaca is what I've used in, in my, my blog post or for like chat, going with what Open Assistant has implemented. Um, I think it's like a, a big issue. <laughs> uh, and I hope we can like find a, a consensus in like the open source community to like, okay, that's like the chat format we use for like all chat models. That's like the uh, single instruction format we use and not create like more more and more uh, formats with like new models since that also makes it more difficult if you want to migrate uh, your application from one to the other model since you need to rewrite all of your prompts and of course when like uh, moving between models you always should make sure that your prompts are, are working uh, as expected. I think a good example we have seen in like in the week of the Llama release was a paper uh, claiming that GPT-4 became worse over time and it didn't really became worse. It's just that like the behavior of the model changed. So they asked um, like, especially for like coding tasks, they basically had a version where they asked for the code only and like a previous version just put out the pure code. And then like the latest version added some kind of markdown uh, format around it with like the back ticks and like a Python. So like the, the prompt was different and like not really executable since the behavior changed. And uh, which of course is like super painful if you build application with it, which rely on like the same output when you like move between models or versions. But it's like always good to like make sure that when you make some changes to the model, is it a, like a hosted API? Is it a new fine tuned model? Is it like a different version of, of a model that you should always like evaluate and check your prompts? And preferably like when like building an application, you should create yourself like a, a small test set with like a hundred examples, which you can like regularly test to make sure that that at least the base features or like functionality is the same. But yeah, of course, like having a change in behavior of like outputs is like super, super critical um, or like super risky for like building on those hosted APIs, which of course now with Llama, where you have the full control, where you can decide when to update or if to update, um, there's basically not going to be like any breaking change. Um, to the model, except you want to make a change, which is not the case for hosted APIs. That's really cool. Thanks, Philip. And we're now at the half hour. Uh, and so I want to use the next 10, 15 minutes to one, answer questions from the live audience, um, and two, get some feedback uh, about the show itself as we close out this first season. Um, and for uh, live questions, like I see that the community started uh, doing thumbs up on the questions that they want answers for. So I'm going to prioritize those ones. And the first one is a question from Anmol. He's asking, like, how large should my data set be for fine tuning? And that's not specific to, to Lama 2, but that's, that's a great question we get often. Yeah, it's a super great question. And, and sadly, there's no clear answer. So we have like evidence for big data sets and evidence for like super small but high quality data sets. So for example, there's a paper called Lima or Less is More, where a group of researchers, I think from Stanford, has created a data set of 1,000 highly qual high quality uh, instructions with outputs and fine tuned back then Lama 1 and achieved better performance than like previous benchmarks. And then on the other side, we have Orca, a paper coming from Microsoft, which trained on, I think, like 5 million uh, instructions or samples, which is also outperforming like previous models. So it's like, it's either heavily and super a lot of data or like low, qual uh, low quantity and super high quality. Of course, like the less quality, uh, the, the higher quality data you have, the, the better it is to if you can add more. But 
um, starting with like a few hundred high quality data points um, and then like iterate on it is definitely a good start. So you don't need to collect like millions of uh, data points to, to get started, especially what we have seen is that the better the base model gets. So like what we have seen from Llama 1 to Llama 2, the easier it is to fine tune it or like to adjust. So maybe even like uh, just future prompting with like 10 different samples uh, is enough to get your proof of concept going. Thank you so much, Philip. And then we have a question also that's uh, um, uh, plus one uh, four times from Daniel. Um, any chance to run text generation inference in a Docker container locally on a MacBook with M1? Is it only possible on NVIDIA? That's a tough one. Yeah, I, I'm not exactly sure, but my understanding is that text generation inference currently only supports NVIDIA GPUs, but there for like exactly this use case is Islama CPP, where you can like really spin up like a local API or endpoint or like run the model inside your, your terminal or in your application. And uh, Llama CPP is also supporting uh, Llama 2. Um, and the blog, uh, blog, I think it's his name, is like a super active community member from like the Llama CPP community and also from the Hugging Face community, which is converting all of the, the base checkpoints, I would say, from transformers to Llama CPP compatible ones and even like quantizing them to like 4-bit. So for example, if you need like a 24 gigabyte GPU for like the 13B model, um, the the uh, Llama CPP 4-bit um, quantized version might only require like 12 gigabytes of, of memory. So if you want to run like on device, you should definitely check out like Llama CPP and like the, the GGML uh, community. Super cool. Um, I saw a question, um, a question there from Naga. Uh, how can I deploy Llama 270B in AWS? And, um, and on this, uh, so for context, uh, we uh, have uh, deep learning containers that uh, uh, users can uh, use uh, to have a, an easy experience, uh, low code experience to deploy and train models. So there's like a training DLC, there's like an inference uh, DLC, and now a large language model inference DLC. Um, so yeah, how, how can you uh, uh, use that or other ways uh, to deploy uh, the 70 billion model? Yeah, so there, there are multiple ways. Um, if you just want to deploy it on AWS, but not inside your own account, you can go with inference endpoints. Uh, we have AWS as a provider, and you can like, for example, create a private endpoint and then connect it to your VPC with having your traffic not leave um, AWS. And then as Jeff mentioned, you can use text generation inference. We are like currently working with AWS on, on the release on the new container for SageMaker, which should come hopefully by the end of next week. So starting uh, the week after, you can like easily deploy 70B Alama on SageMaker using the, the current experience. And if you don't want to wait, or if you are not using SageMaker and you use like EC2, EKS or ECS, um, you can of course like go to the text generation inference repository and in there, there's like uh, links to the, the uh, GitHub registry for the container, and there you can pull it and then like simply deploy a web uh, endpoint on AWS as you probably do before. Of course, you need to have like the the instance uh, quota available, and for like 70B, you need at least two A100s for quanti uh, with quantization enabled, uh, four A100s without uh, quantization enabled. Awesome. Question about latencies. Um, do we have any benchmarks for Lama 27B, 13B latency on different NVIDIA GPUs? Um, I should find the, the link to the uh, 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 LLM uh, leaderboard, uh, performance leaderboard. I, th I think- Do you want to set this? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like what I can share is like, I think there hasn't been like a lot of benchmarks. I mean, Lama is now out what like roughly a week, uh, I would expect more to come. We are definitely interested in running some some benchmarks on uh, uh, or together with our hardware partners like that. That's what Jeff currently is like looking for. And then like different NVIDIA GPUs. I think it really depends on like consumer GPUs. I guess if you're interested in like consumer GPUs like the RTX series, a good place to ask the question is um, the Reddit sub or the subreddit local Llama, uh, where all of like the, the basically on device um, Llama community is. 
And if you are like more interested in like server uh, NVIDIA GPUs, like A10s, A100s, um, that's where we plan to, to run different benchmarks uh, with our services and then probably create a new blog post or put it into the documentation to, to give a better understanding how fast it is. But currently what do we see for the Llama 70B uh, in hiking chat? is um, depending of course on the batch size, but like with web batch size one and super highly optimized for latency on 4A100, we see around uh, 40 milliseconds per token. That's awesome. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I posted the link in the chat uh, to the uh, uh, open performance leaderboard. Uh, we're running continuously uh, uh, experiments uh, to uh, give you numbers on latencies and throughputs uh, for uh, for various models. So it's a, it's a great resource for the community. A very specific question here from uh, Bayam B. Uh, I saw that you're applying page attention in your deployment framework, and I think that refers to a recent release of text generation inference. Uh, does that allow inferencing of FLAN T5 models? Um, so page attention or flash attentions are techniques we use in text generation inference to have better latency and higher throughput. And uh, currently we have custom modeling code for Llama, GPT Neo X, Falcon, and Santa Coda. So there is no page attention or flash attention version for Flan T5, but Flan T5 is or like T5 in general is still supported and a bit optimized uh, using uh, text generation inference. Thanks. Uh, next, I have a question with a lot, lot of feeling behind it. I can tell because there's like 10 thumbs up behind it. It's from Jose Manuel. Uh, and he's asking why Bloom hasn't been as popular as Llama. I don't think that's a very much a technical question. Um, I would say that uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a, a, first, uh, a first answer, my opinion, uh, which is that uh, Bloom uh, was very much uh, an experiment in how to do uh, uh, AI machine learning in the open. It was an experiment in doing open science. Um, it was the largest project ever, I think, in terms of number of contributors. Uh, there were over a thousand uh, uh, scientists and researchers who joined uh, one of the many uh, working groups uh, that published everything about uh, the process. Um, I think today it is still uh, the uh, largest multilingual um, a large language model. And so it does uh, amazingly well uh, on these multilingual tasks because of the quality and diversity uh, of its uh, data set. Uh, but I think to me, like the biggest outcome of uh, big science, which is the project that's delivered the Bloom uh, models, is to show the world that uh, you can do uh, uh, great machine learning collaboratively uh, in a very open a manner in a very responsible manner where you publish the data set, uh, you uh, collaborate on how and why uh, you build the data set a certain way and all the considerations, the many considerations and working groups that went into building this model. Uh, so to me, that's a kind of a different object. Uh, if you look at uh, Bloom versus Lama uh, V2, uh, um, even though it is at the end of the day, uh, a checkpoint and a repository on the hiding face hub. What are your thoughts, Philip? Yeah, like totally agree. I think something we should definitely mention. So like Llama is like not came out of nowhere. Like Meta invested already like heavily before with like OPT, for example, on like pre-training those large language model. And then like had a way more, I would say narrowed down focus with like English and um, more efficient on like inference. So they, they made a lot of more thoughts about, okay, what the model could be used for. And then like on, on the Bloom side, it's like really, as you mentioned, like it was a research project and like what we should mention. So for example, Big Code, which basically came out of like uh, big science uh, where like we like basically work with ServiceNow and like created this collaboration ship to, to train StarCoder, which is currently the, the best um, code LLM um, available train on permissive uh, code data was a result out of big science and like Lama was a result of like OPT and like previous checkpoints and BARD and like all of the other research Meta did. So it's like um, definitely also like a di in a different state uh, in time. Awesome. And um, 
I want to save the the last uh, the last uh, few minutes to get uh, get some feedback from the audience uh, on the show. As I said at the beginning, uh, V4, the fourth episode, is going to be the last of this uh, first season. Is there going going to be a second season? I don't know what form will it take. I don't know. Uh, so please let us know in the comments, like what was your uh, your favorite episode, what you like the most about uh, uh, the show, uh, the things that are not really worth your time uh, in the show that will be super, super helpful. Uh, the comments will stay vi visible to us after the recordings ends. Uh, so we really appreciate uh, you giving us some feedback now uh, while we answered some uh, first question and um, I fly some of the uh, comments uh, GQ says, please continue it. Thank you. Okay, got your vote. Uh, Dustin loves it. Um, Lance liked the first season. And like, if you have like critical feedback too, like, please, uh, that's going to really help us a, a ton. Um, yeah, sorry about the technical difficulties uh, earlier in the episode. Um, okay, let's take one last question about Lama 2 while, uh, while the community gives us some great feedback. Um, okay, Francisco Javier Martin has a question about uh, fine-tuning. Uh, can Lama 2 or any other large language model be fine-tuned to create a recommender system or would not be as accurate as using recommendation algorithms such as collaborating, filtering, clustering, etc.? That's an interesting question because um, there's like this new um, uh, way of thinking that um, you can use one model to do everything that uh, machine learning uh, would be otherwise uh, able to do for you. Uh, but there are, of course, um, many tasks that are specific enough that a specific model uh, would uh, be a much better alternative in terms of cost, in terms of latency, in terms of performance either, uh, even. Um, so let's talk about recommender system. Like, is this uh, is Lama too relevant to 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 these type of problems? I would definitely uh, say yes. So, like, either as like a, a solution itself. I mean, like all of those LLM has like a huge knowledge about the world, and if you like prompt it correctly, I'm pretty sure it can give you like recommendations on like should you rather like. Uh, by uh, like a, a raincoat or like uh, one which is warmer if you like explain it okay like i'm currently based in germany it's like summer but we have like 70 degree outside it's raining so like i'm pretty sure that the model could get, could give me a good recommendation on like what to buy for example and also what is like super interesting and there's like also like let me share the, the paper in the chat it's called a survey on large language models for recommendations is okay how could you like combine those large language models with other systems like Traditional recommendation system makes it super easy to like compare user behavior or user interest with with one and each other. What if you could like prompt the model using this information that uh, I am like uh, based in Germany and like a similar user like based in like I don't know Italy uh, where we have like a lot of the same interests, bought this or that, and then like through like a conversation or like through the search I'm I'm looking for the behind the scenes the model is like leveraging both and then like either giving me like an answer hey. Uh, the, the rain code uh, from I don't know like Adidas uh, might be interested for you like here's a link for example I think like the whole like experience on how we shop could definitely be impacted by LLMs maybe in the future we are like not go like using a search term and are, like scrolling through like different items maybe we like get a recommendation immediately in some kind of like a, a chat form or experience rather than like needing to find a, a black shirt ourselves. Awesome, Philip. Thank you so much. Uh, Bayan Bie asked uh, one last question. How big in terms of impact is the release of Lama 2? Well, the reason we uh, dedicated this episode to Lama 2 uh, is I think what uh, Nathan, Nathan Lambert, a uh, researcher uh, on our team. Hi, hi, Nathan, currently in Hawaii uh, for ICML. Um, in his blog post, he said it was probably the biggest event uh, in machine learning for, uh, for the year. Um, so yeah, we think it's really, really significant. Uh, we can tell the impact because uh, all of the users and customers um, that we're talking to are asking about it. Uh, so it was amazing to dedicate this last episode uh, to Lama2. Thanks everybody. We're going to be uploading this show on our YouTube channel where all the others can be found as well. 
It was great to host you. Thank you very much. And maybe see you for the next season uh, come fall. Bye, everyone. Bye.